Today is the day and we are moving back into a little bit more of the mechanical side on this video, going back and previously visiting another video which was building the fuel cell. In that video we built a fuel cell out of aluminum sheet metal and today we're going to go ahead and finish that by putting a liner in it, a urethane liner, and uh, coating it with some urethane coating as well. Anyway, let's go take a look at that fuel cell. Now we're going to create our own liner in this tank and we're going to use a two-part urethane that is often used for building molds. At least that's what I've been using for is to build molds and it is extremely tough. But we're going to also add a fiberglass scrim or a fiberglass layer in it to add a little bit of strength to it, bind it together and uh, make it a little bit stronger with the fiberglass in there anyway. Like I said, this urethane is uh, really tough. Um, has a shore hardness of about 60. Um, if you have a quarter of inch of it, you could take a sharp screwdriver and try to stab it through and it just would not penetrate it. It is that tough. We're going to use only uh, probably a little less than an eighth of an inch. What we're going to do is we're going to put it in here and let it just uh, flow, self-level out. But like I said, we're going to put down a fiberglass layer in the midst of all that. So we'll put the fiberglass in on our first layer. The tank has been cleaned, just uh, washed with acetone, didn't need to scratch it up or sand it or anything. It is, like I said, this thing is probably the best thing I could uh, describe it as is the same thing they make Gorilla Glue out of, but a little more flexible. So we've got a fiberglass layer in there and just lapping that up about a half an inch on the next edge. And then we pour our urethane after we mix it up, pour it in and uh, we'll put as much as we can in there the, the, before it starts to just uh, flow off the edge. Although as thick as it is, about the thickness of honey, it has a pretty good capillary action and will stay and not try to drip down the edge very much because of that uh, viscosity. And here we've switched one side's of cured about five hours later. And so we've turned the tank 90 degrees, put another layer of fiberglass in on the side and uh, do the same thing. Just pour it in, let it self level. And while we're at it, also uh, I got the lid here. I'm not going to put fiberglass on the lid itself, but you'll see here how it uh, kind of flows out like honey. You get a kind of an idea of uh, the consistency of this stuff. And we're just going to spread that around, just using the stirring stick for most of this. But uh, find this big surface area here that I've got it wide open and I can uh, switch and find myself a little uh, squeegee just made out of a piece of cardboard and use that to spread this stuff around. You can see after you mix it up, it kind of a, turns to a brown color and then goes to a pretty amber, just like honey, like I said, kind of the consistency and the color of honey. And as you saw me as we started on this lid, just a little acetone to clean the aluminum off. But it typically does not need any surface preparation beyond that because this stuff is so sticky. In fact, when we make molds out of this, I have found that you can uh, wax the surface of your part, put some PVA on there, and it will still stick unless you also add usually a little Vaseline or something to uh, keep it from bonding. So while that lid is uh, curing, we're gonna jump over to the tank again, go for the fourth side here. Again, just putting our fiberglass in, lapping it about a half an inch up on the edges. Of course, this side of the tank has two different levels. So we're gonna put fiberglass on both of them. Go ahead and uh, just the same thing, go ahead and uh, spread out the urethane. Now urethane is very good also at uh, being resistant to different fuels. Probably the only thing that is a little better at resistance is butyl rubber, but it's probably second on the list of resistance to fuels. Even E85 is very resistant to. So the last surface we have here is the bottom of the tank. We've got all the sides finished, so now it's just a matter of uh, one more layer of fiberglass and one more pour of the urethane to to that bottom surface of the tank. And of course, we've got these little uh, supports in here, kind of in the way, but we'll just work around them. Get our little cardboard squeegee, spread that around, push it into all the corners to do it. So the tank should be of 
watertight with just the welds, but this of course adds another added security of uh, fuel tight. We're gonna go ahead also and put a little around this edge and it will also self level. And this would almost make a gasket enough to uh, tighten the lid on with, but we will actually add a, another gasket in the end. So once that urethane liner was done, I'm gonna put a coating on the outside of this tank and just a self etching primer to start with. And then I was trying a new product, um, I think it's called Gator Guard, it's similar to a truck bed liner. Um, the only problem was, is uh, I'm not very happy with this stuff. It had a Kevlar pulp in it. And no matter how much you mix it, you could not break that Kevlar pulp up enough to not have these big lumps. So I found that you just take a roller and go back and forth over and over and over trying to break those uh, lumps up. But uh, still, like I said, just was not completely happy with the finished texture of this thing. But it is uh, coated and sealed forever with an epoxy, like I said, bed liner, I guess. Here's the finished version of the coating. Now, some people ask me again about the foam filling this tank. Now, this is special foam that's actually manufactured just for this purpose. It is completely open cell and the fuel can move right through it. The only thing, once you have the space occupied with this foam, the fuel moving through it is uh, drastically slowed down in its movement so you don't have any sloshing. And this foam fill will go somewhere like this. Of course, that one piece is going to be open. That's where our fuel sender is going to fit down into that deep well of this fuel tank. And instead of me going through and taking the time to cut these foam up, I'm not going to install them permanently right now until I get the fuel sender finished. But here's the fuel sender, just a small lightweight pump, not the final pump to build pressure, but just one to move fuel out of the tank. I need to extend the length of it a little bit to go down to the bottom of the tank. But we'll have a fuel sender in there as well to give us our fuel level. And it just uses a, uh, a tab that will run across the top of this thing, tightened up and pull an O-ring against the bottom sill, seal it against the inside of the tank, which is okay because we can take the lid off the tank rather than insert it from the outside. So here it is, not bolted all together, but in its final form, and we're just gonna put it in for a trial fit. Like I said, we have uh, brackets that we put on before. This little uh, aluminum bracket that comes out the side and holds the one edge up. So it's supported on three sides. One side sits against the bodywork, one side against the frame rail, and one by the bracket. And there it is. Well, there we have our fuel cell. I'm going to be brutally honest with you, though, and let you know that this is probably not going to be the fuel cell that ends up in the vehicle. Um, once it's in here and uh, looking at some other things to consider that uh, kind of come about after building this thing and learning a few things, I've realized that uh, I've lost some space that I really need up in here where the electrical panel is going to be. It's going to be a really tight fit, something that I don't want to have a tight fit. I was hoping to have um, very good access to the electrical panel and the connections there to be able to uh, um, troubleshoot work those things and I'm uh, I've lost a lot of space around here that would have been uh, a lot better to occupy with the fuel cell I'm I could probably gain another three to five gallons by uh, pushing it into the some of these areas and it is just really close for wheel travel clearance and other things but I might have another place to repurpose that fuel tank too and maybe just use it now to get the engine running at least but there may be another fuel cell project coming up in the series. Anyway, that is our video for today. Thanks for coming by and hope you come back and see us again.